to step back a little bit, Jacob. Uh, it is fascinating to me seeing the world economic system changing right before our eyes. I don't know. Yes. I don't want to see it in life, but it, it is fascinating to experience that. Um, I wasn't around when the Nixon did this. I wasn't around when Brett Wood, uh, Brett Wood and, and how it happened. Uh, uh, but we're seeing it now. Uh, Jacob, just look back at it and, and put it in comparison to what you saw in 71 and obviously before that with Brentwood and and how the world is going to change. But now you have an element of the last the day of the age, the last day of the age. And you also have the element of technology and how that plays a role in the new economic system that the world seems to be embarking. The big change in the Nixon era was when he basically defaulted on the dollar, took it off the gold standard um, and did not handle the transition very well. Um, I think you mean Breton Woods. That was after World War II, One. in which it, yeah, the dollar became right. the basis of the world currency reserve. Well, what they're doing is they're eroding the credibility of the dollar. Fortunately, the one the Chinese economy is in more trouble than than the United States is. It's well hidden, but it's in more trouble than the United States is. It is only because these other economies are in worse trouble. Um, that the dollar is still here. Um, Brick is bricks in itself is not going to go anywhere in the long term. There's too many problems, including the, the conflict between China and India. Um, so that's not the case. But the dollar is only there because the others are worse. Um, they have no alternative yet. They're trying to make one. But the irresponsible policies of the Federal Reserve and of the administration are not doing the dollar any favor. Again, they have to continue to raise interest rates to strengthen the dollar against other currencies. It's not just the inflation. They're forced to do this to maintain the position of the dollar. But who's going to pay for this? Ultimately, the American people are going to pay for it. The American exactly. public. Now, if there is somebody, if they, if they voted for Biden or they voted for Obama and they suffer economic hardship, they have no right to complain. They got what they voted for. My concern is for the overall good of the nation and the decent people who are not subhuman in their political thinking, um, who, who realize what Obama and Biden are. Um, that is the problem. I'd also point out, though, that despite the fact he did many good things that most of us would agree with, Mr. Trump did nothing, nothing about the deficits. He did nothing about the deficits. Ronald Reagan made the deficits worse. Ronald Reagan looted Social Security. I don't see a political solution uh, to these problems <clears throat> um, that, that, that an election is going to make a difference. It'll be like what's happened in Holland. Well, hmm. the people who are for the rights of farmers and of the public had an election victory, but it's not changed anything. Um, no, it didn't, it didn't matter. The, 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 basically almost intimidating people into selling their farms to reduce the amount of ag aggregable land in a country in Europe with very efficient farming system. Um, the globalists are going to do what they want. And I don't see any simple political solution. There will, of course, eventually be one person who's going to offer a solution, and that'll be the Antichrist. Fortunately, Christ is coming after him. He'll clean up the mess. <laughs> But other than that, it's it's not going to get better in the long term. No matter who wins the election, it's not elections. It's not going to get better in the long term. Let's talk a little bit about the American election, real quick, Jacob. Um, we will talk about the, the the farmers in in the Netherlands at the end on backstage. Uh, but we have some interesting things going on. You have you have Trump on one side with the Republicans and meddling in with, uh, of course, playing footsies, as you would say, with the uh, rhinos. Yes. Then you have Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who seems to be saying the right things, talking about fentanyl, you know, coming into the into the nation. The borders are wide open. He's not anti-immigration, but anti-illegal immigration. Yes. He's against what they've done in America, uh, especially with the uh, bank bailouts and all that. Seems to be hitting all the right notes. Now he's got a history. He's got a family pedigree. 
but he's right about fentanyl. Let's talk about that for a moment. The borders before we jump into uh, Robert F. K. Jr. Uh, the fentanyl overdose, two hundred and seventy nine percent since two thousand sixteen. The largest amount of uh, dr- it's the biggest drug crisis we ever had. It kills more young people between eighteen and twenty five than any other any other disease or any other drug. It skyrocketed, and we have Title forty two ending in about a week. Uh, is Robert Kennedy Jr. right? Well, of course he's right. Anybody with a fifth grade education who would look at the facts would be right. The Biden administration is functionally, with my orcas, they are pro-fentanyl. Fentanyl is the biggest killer of people from ages 18 to 45. Not just the biggest killing drug, it's the biggest killer. And these Chinese manufactured quantities of fentanyl are coming into the country with the de facto blessings of the Biden administration. That's what they're doing. They're actually bringing it in. Um, or allowing it to be brought in with their with their lack of border policy. Concerning the Ill- illegal immigration, it's the same thing. It is the same exact thing. Um, what is also interesting, as is always the case, the biggest victims of these policies are going to be minorities, Hispanics and especially Blacks. The fentanyl crisis is across the board. It's national, but it's particularly severe in the minority communities, and especially the black community. That's what what really killed George Floyd. The autopsy showed he was not strangled by the policeman's knee on his neck. The autopsy showed he was under the influence of fentanyl and had some kind of cardiovascular failure that was fentanyl-related. But it was easier to blame the cop than it was to blame the fentanyl. Um, The minorities are the biggest victims. Secondly, um, the illegal immigrants, whose jobs are they going to take? They're going to take upstart jobs from Hispanic and Black Americans. Again, people who vote Democrat vote for their own death. They not only vote for the death of the country, they vote for their own death. They vote against their own economic and family interests. Um, Now, rhinos are no better. Rhinos are no better. 